It's that special feeling of putting in your last module in your rack. That sense of completion. Having such power. And analog awesomeness. This is Alternating Bit. Join me as we take a look at my studio as we examine it piece by piece. A modular system is by its very nature modular, so you can alter units, swap them out, change it, upgrade it, what have you. So to ever say that your modular setup is complete is a fallacy, but regardless, there is a time and a point you reach that you fill that cabinet or you achieved a goal that you had set, or you simply run out of money. So at that point, you basically say, okay, well, for now, my modular system is complete. And so that's where I'm at right now. So I just thought I would share my setup for anybody who might be interested to see what exact modules I have in my rack of my MU-sized modular synthesizer setup. first rack I have a Behringer effects unit virtualizer 3d and you know Behringer has a reputation for being a low-end series of equipment but I think they get a, a worse rap than they deserve this is my effects device for my mixer it has a lot of built-in effects ranging from all the standard delay echo reverb stuff to some of the more advanced vocoder or uh, vinyl pop sound things like that all built in very convenient, very easy to use. So that's what I have on the top. At the top of my next rack, I have the mixture I was just referring to. And this is the, a mixture that I use exclusively for my modular setup. I have another, two more mixers actually, but this is one just for the modular. And basically all the uh, VCAs go out to these various channels. And the effects processor I just showed you, the Behringer, is the effects return for this unit. So I can use those effects for this entire module is set up, but I can only use one effect at a time, of course. Top row of my third rack, we have the Dope for Mac 16.3 sequencer. Basically, I really don't use this as much as I should. It's become my source clock for my modular sequencers, but occasionally I'll patch in and use it for some pitch altering, and also if I want to change uh, different times going into my clocks. I'll use that as well. I think part of the reason I don't use it very much is how I have to go into all these sub-menus to be able to change things. So you want to go into the events, you have to go into the, each row and then... It's not as satisfying and, and quick in real time as it is when you're dealing with... When you get to start getting used to sequencers with, you know, switches where everything happens live without sub-menus. But at any rate, it's a really good uh, sequencer. Then underneath that I have another Behringer item which is highly ranked actually and that is their, their Ultra Patch Pro. This patch bay is very useful. Basically when you're talking about lots of wires in the back from all these devices it's really really handy to be able to front patch a cable into the patch bay. Let's say for instance I have a drum machine that has no effects and I, I just want to put it into a channel it will have an effect. I can do that in individually. Uh, I can, I basically have done a label up here so I know my, my patches, but the outputs, the CV outputs of this are all in the back. And they actually use these tiny, like a headphone jack. I hate those tiny jacks, which is again why I don't have a Eurorack system. So it's very nice that I can patch the pitch and the gate just using this. These all coincide with the channels of the Dope for Mac. And then I have other devices and also with my Vermona DRM drum machine, each individual drum sound is routed to one of these patches. So that's really handy. Okay, starting at the top left row of the modular system, I have the U-Synth Fix Filter Bank. And this is a MOTM format. So it's like a tank, this metal is just like amazing, this faceplate. Very, very strong, sturdy knobs, everything. And that allows me to totally shape a sound breaking every little bit of frequency to, you know, filter sounds. Really amazing what you can do with this. It's basically an equalizer, but uh, really complete. You can cut frequencies of a sound out. And lately I mostly use it to shape noise. I actually love using white noise in my tracks, so I can really change the, the sound of the noise with these frequency knobs. Next item over, we have the Analog Craftsman Gristleizer DLX. 
and the gristleizer has a really really raw harsh sound so it's a filter uh, it's a VCA also um, you can switch those modes a lot, lot of features on it but bottom line is for me I just when I want something really gritty it tears it up it's kind of a uh, really harsh analog sound and speaking of tearing things up let's go to the next module another analog craftman module and that's the AC Vox it has the Russian characters. Sometimes I still have to go look because I can't remember which ones are in and out. But at any rate, this filter just really rips things up. It's really also a harsh filter, which can be awesome when you need something like that. Next time over, we have the Encore Electronics Universal Event Generator. This I have not used as much as I want to yet. I still have to understand it even more. So far, I've mostly used it as a mini sequencer. Uh, and also a mini gate, but I have not even used these other features. I'm just always using this gated step mode. Then over here we have a very common, simple, yet useful device, multiples. Multiples enable you to split a source into copies. Basically you want to send a signal to multiple locations at once. You can put in one and then out outsource many other channels of that source. So that's really a, a very useful module to have. Okay, next row over, this is what I consider the, the brains of my setup because I always gravitate towards my 16-step rotary analog sequencer by Music From Outer Space. I mean, how can you not? <laughs> it's, look, it's so awesome looking. But, you know, ironically my Doper Mac has more capabilities than this does, but this has the kind of like that live aspect where I can just mute things really quickly, shut them off, on and off, change pitch, you know, just I really love how it flows and all the outputs I use frequently. I'll have the clock out, go to other sequencers, and it's great to have 16 steps. I have a couple mini sequencers and only eight steps, so that's always good. And of course, you can change those step durations, make it shorter, four steps instead of, you know, 16 and so forth. A lot, a lot of features, none that has a random, if you want to do something experimental or whatever, a random notes hit around, so that's really cool too. Just one over from there is the use of clock divider. Very handy. I must admit that I, I didn't even realize its potential when I got it, and now I use it so often. It gives you so much flexibility. So right now it's receiving a pulse all at the same rate, and this will cut it in half. So now that this channel can feed it at a different rate, and it just keeps cutting it. So you can have it, you can have one clock source, and yet you can split it in different speeds. And that does a lot of cool things with music. So, yeah, really, really handy. And then next over we have here the Synthtech MOTM190 VCA. Also has a ring mod input. That's part of the main reason why I got it. And yet I haven't even used it as a ring mod yet. But it isn't always, always good to have another VCA. Voltage controlled amplifier. And all my VCAs I always have a cable already in its out going to my mixer above so that way I don't have to worry about patching where it goes they're pretty much always set to a certain channel on my mixer occasionally I might swap things out but it's just handy to have that way it is not intentional that I passed over the sub octave multiplexer just as somebody forewarned me in a forum a long time ago that they ended up selling it or they don't use it very much I've kind of found that too but I still like it and when I use it it's awesome so this is probably one of my least used filters, but when I use it, it is really cool. Sub oscillator doing those low levels, a lot of control. I saw a demo online that shows you how to use the AMB crossover. I've yet to be able to really successfully do that, but that's another reason why I keep holding on to this. Okay, next row down, I have an Oakley Slim VCO, voltage controlled oscillator. I have two of those, one here and then one here on, on the far right. Always very handy to have oscillators, of course. They're what produce the sound. It doesn't have as many waveforms as a standard 2U sized VCO, but you can at least change it, the wave shape from triangle to saw, and you also have a pulse output. And of course, you can also use it as an LFO. So, just just great, I love, I love its build. I love how you can change the octaves with the toggle switch. Really, really nice. And you can change the wave shape with control voltage. So that's really cool. Next over, which was is my newest module, my final one that I, I added, 
and that is the Club of the Knob sequential switch. And what this will enable me to do, I haven't even used it yet, is to be able to change the channel output with CV input. So in other words, I could have four sequences pumping into here and let CV dictate what channel it switches over to based on the gate and the reset and so forth. So it just basically lets the uh, machine kind of decide what's going to happen next. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, and then next I have the Source of Uncertainty module, 266, West Coast Random Source. This thing is chock full of, of stuff that I, I can't even get into and I'm not even going to pretend to know it. <laughs> but basically what I really love about it is it has quantized random voltages, a lot of random sources, and so you basically don't know exactly what you're getting, which is just perfect when you're doing experimental or ambient music and you don't want something to be looping the same. It also has kind of like a sample and hold feature where you can store random voltages in here, probability changes, I mean just amazing stuff. It also has a whole row of noise sources, so I already had some, but it's always nice to have more. And I particularly like it here because it's right next to my, uh, just above is my filter bank. So that's kind of handy too. But anyway, so that's that's a really nice unit there and I'm, I'm gonna have a lot more fun with that soon. Next one over is the STG Mankato filter. Uh, this is an amazing filter. Most of these modules I've already done demos of so I, I don't get into them in detail now, but this filter is very, very powerful. It has a really nice raw, uh, low-end sound. When you when you close that filter down, it's really, really nice, and it has a lot of shaping that you can do with control inputs and, and signal, multiple signal inputs. Really, really nice sounding filter. I like it a lot. And then one more Oakley Slim VCO on the end. Okay, next row over have the Oakley Journeyman 2 filter. This is pretty much one of my main go-to filters. I really love the sound of this filter. It has a, a low pass and a high pass switch. And you got your regular frequency resonance drive and then you know some CV control. But it's just the sound. I mean, I, was, I can just sit here and talk about these things and it really doesn't do much. But I'm just letting you know what I've got in my rack. So that's an awesome filter. I love it. Next over we have the Oakley Overdrive 2. And I got this so I'd be able to add some distortion to sound. I don't use it as much as I thought I would, but regardless, every now and then, when there's that need, it definitely can do the job. And especially, depending upon what you feed into it, if you're sending a high resonated signal, it will push the drive to sound distorted. Next over is my mostly used LFO source of all the ones I have. I, this is just my go-to LFO. It's very simple, but it does the job. It's the Oakley Triple LFO. It's three LFO sources, and they each one have a triangle pulse output. And then, of course, you can change the shape of that. Awesome LFO, I love it. Next over, we have Synthesis Technology MOTM 101 Noise and Sample and Hold. It has sample and hold controls for that output, speed, level, and slew. It has noise sources, white, pink. It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife bread and butter unit. Next over is another Oakley filter. This is almost like the, the Oakley rack. Really, one, two, three, four, five, six units uh, in this row. Got them all from Crisp. Great build. Anyway, this is the Deep Equinox. It has a really row sound. It's really good, I like it a lot. I use this a lot too, actually. It's great sound shaping. This is another essential filter. I use it all the time. Love it. Next unit over is the Ian Fritz Pulser. The 5 Pulser basically lets you switch. I'm not going to pretend to be able to explain how this works or what it does, but it basically gives a really metallic sound. I could easily Google this and read it to you, but I'm not going to try to impress anybody. And then I have two Oakley ADSR VCAs. It's an envelope generator slash VCA combo, which is really, really handy. And it's also looping, which I, that's a feature. I, the only way I've, I've used that is when I don't have a gate going in. I just open up like that, but that's totally an insult to the device. I have yet to really understand how the looping aspect works, but I use these all the time. These are bread and butter modules as well. Okay, next rack over, we have the SSL Synthetic Sound Labs 
voltage controlled ADSR envelope. It's an envelope generator that basically can be controlled by CV input, which is pretty cool. Kind of rare in just a one use space. I actually just got this, so I haven't even used it yet. So far, it looks cool. That's always important. I've heard that this is actually one of the most versatile voltage controlled envelopes out there, and I've yet to tap into that, but I'm looking forward to it. it has multiple inputs, can do lots of things. Next over, we have the Moon Modular 563 Trigger Sequencer. Another module that I've yet to tap its full potential. I do use it frequently, but I'm usually using just one or two rows, so I would like to someday really benefit from using this module. But for now, just like my MFOS 16 step, I just love having those switches to quickly flip and change. I mean, it's just like you can do it on the fly. That whole live aspect is just what makes modulars so fun. Next module over, we have the CoreSynth VC Noise Lo-Fi Machine. I use this a lot, actually. I love using noise sources, noise sounds in my music, and this is really cool. It has a filter and it has some CV inputs. Next over, rather rare to the MU size format, but quite popular in the Eurorack system, is the Phonogene. This is by Make Noise, and this is a great unit to have. Very expensive, but what it can do kind of makes it worth it. This obviously just opens the doors to like almost anything because it's a sampler, so you can put anything into it, manipulate it with all kinds of CV inputs. I do use it quite frequently, especially for voice samples. I love to have voice samples triggered through that, so really cool unit. Next row down, it is a effects pedal, the Boss RE20. It's modeled after the Roland Space Echo RE201, and it just is an awesome, I can't tell you enough about this pedal. It is amazing, and it's, I mean, the fact that I made it part of my modular setup tells you something. I mean, I have this on a stand, and that's all attached, so lots of control, lots of cool effects. You can tap the tempo if you want, of course. You've got repeat rates, I mean, it's just a space echo thing. I mean, again, these things are hard to just describe. You'd have to see some of my video demos and music to be able to hear it, but really, really cool effect pedal. Okay, next row down, we have the Happy Nerding Super Salter. It's easier read than said out loud. Anyway, this has a really nice sound effect. You can probably also recreate this with some regular modules, but obviously to have a dedicated module is nice when you just want something on the fly. And of course it has CV control, and it's got two separate outputs. And I think they're slightly calibrated differently uh, from behind so that you can use them differently a little bit. But anyway, I replaced the knobs myself. I hated the knobs that it came with. They had really sharp edges and they were small and really, really loose. These are still loose, I, I couldn't change that, but I put some nice fat knobs on it, so I, re I really like it. Next over we have the Club of the Knobs Arabesque Generator, and that unit is certainly a unit I will not be using frequently, but when I use it, it obviously does amazing things, and that's where you have one signal coming in. Let's just say it's a voltage per octave control of a melody or something, and then it takes up to four copies of that, and then slowly, like, cascades them in time. It, it, again, this is really hard to explain without actually doing, but I have a demo for this also. If you look on my, my YouTube channel, you'll see. But yeah, I like it a lot. It's very versatile, does a lot of cool things. Next over is the SSL Digital Delay Unit, and this is really, really nice. I love this thing. I use it a lot for dub techno. This is a good source to just even start fattening up a sound of an echo, like even before I go through my effect pedal, uh, the space echo. This is just a great unit, and it also has delay CV control if you want. And with the right CV input, you can get some serious feedback going on. Next is the hex inverter from RE Synthesis, Simple Sequencer. It's just an eight step, and as it, the name says, Simple Sequencer, I have two of them. I like them a lot, they're really cool. One little complaint is these switches are really hard to tell when it's switched over, because they're so small. It kind of feel like you're almost breaking it or something, but it is still a metal hard switch, but it's just one little complaint I have, but it's really cool to have this, this sequencer that you can just on the fly control, you know, the, the pitch. And you've got clock in, CV out, gate out, and I like to toggle between one and another sometimes or whatever. Really, really cool. So I've got two of those. Then I have the SSL Tap Tempo LFO. The fact that it has CV control for all these is really, really cool. And my favorite feature, 
is that it has a random wave shape. That's just a great effect. And finally on the end, I have the Oakley VRG. And this is one of those modules that there's no way I'm even gonna try to explain. But I do know some of the things that it does. And it's like one of those signal altering modules. It's a Swiss Army knife module, does a lot of things. Got it built in LFO as well. Something I still have yet to explore, but I, I just knew that I needed it. One of those kind of things. Next rack over, we have from synthesizers.com, a multiples unit. I had one higher up there in the rack. I probably actually use this one more often, but anyway, great. Just, you know, multiples, you need them. <laughs> Next module over, this is probably, I could easily say one of my favorite modules of my entire rack. I just love this. This is a club of the knobs, voltage controlled analog delay. And even though it, it, it's technically digital, it has analog features and it is just super cool. I, I really wanted two of these. It's, it's really, really great. But the amount of delay can be changed, of course. A lot of controls, CV, just, I can't say enough about this unit. It has a real nice, like raw, edgy sound. It's like, it even has some noise that it probably isn't even intentional, but I love it. Next over, we have the Core Synth Odyssey of Sound VCO. This is probably my favorite VCO that I have. It really is cool. The fact that it has a ring mod output, a lot of control with inputs here. I don't know, I just I like the layout, I like the sound of it. It's really, really nice. Next over is the Analog Craftsman QA slash R, I guess quad. It's four attack release envelope generators. You can do some really cool stuff. Best of all, it has orange lights, very nice. Anyway, attack release, you know, you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. I think I have a demo out there that I did of this as well. And I've got that located right next to a, a .com, so this has a .com envelope generator as well. It has a manual gate button. And what I like about that is sometimes I will have a sample in my phono gene that I want to manually trigger without a sequencer telling it when to trigger. And I can just punch that and it'll trigger the sample. So that's really cool. Another unit that I've done a full demo on online, but just while I'm doing this, just to tell you I have another semi-modular unit here, and that's the Future Retro XS synthesizer. So that still allows me to patch and route into my modular system if I want to, into my patch bay, into my you know sequencers for control, the gate control, which you can also plug into itself or whatever. There's, there's just lots of things you can do. Uh, I mean, this, oh man, I can't say enough about this synthesizer. It's just amazing. It just by itself is just wow. But anyway, I like to consider it as part of my modular setup because I can do some patching with it. And the next row down is my trusty Vermona DRM MK3 analog drum synthesizer. Love this thing to death. It does have individual outs. So let's say I want to add an effect to just the snare or something, I can just plug that in and take that up to my patch bay, which will have an effect return on that. But the sound shaping is just awesome. I love this machine, really, really cool. And of course I have to give credit where it's due and that is what is actually triggering my Vermona DRM-1 and that is the Korg Electribe MX. So I do use this for sound as well, probably more often use this as a trigger source for my Vermona because it requires that. Okay, we're now at the bottom row of my modular rack. And so let's start with the one on the far left and that is the synthesizers.com instrument interface amplifier. And I actually use that a lot for, probably not for what's intended for, but a lot of times I'll have sounds going through filters and the filters really cut off the level and I just need to boost it. So I just run it through the amplifier and output and it just gives it a nice boost. Next over is another .com unit and that is their infamous Q106 oscillator. A very powerful oscillator, does all that it needs to do and has a lot of great controls, including pulse width and voltage per octave input. Attached to that, I have the Q161.com oscillator mixer, and that is just a quicker way to choose a source, triangle sine wave saw and so forth, but at the same time, you can mix them together through here. So this is attached to that from behind. Next over is the Moon Modular 591 Quad Switch Matrix. And the reason why I got this, I, I think this is really designed for even larger systems than what I have, because I only use like maybe two channels of it, two rows or whatever, but when I want to do live switching between, say, 
a couple simple sequencers running, then I will just switch over to the next input. Like, you know, if I want to do eight measures of something or whatever, and then switch over to the next and so forth. So th this is just a nice, nice switching device to have. And next over is the .com Q107 state variable filter. This is an essential filter. This is definitely the, the next most popular filter that I use next to my Oakley Journeyman. This is just a great sounding filter. Also has a voltage control for the level of resonance and voltage per octave input for the frequency. So really, really great filter with different outputs. And now for the last row of my modular rack, I have one more .com oscillator. This one is attached to an oscillator aid. And this one, I actually prefer the oscillator aid over the oscillator mixer. If I had a choice, I'd have two of these instead because I love the wave select. You just switch it over to what wave you want. That is just awesome, really, really cool. You have a soft sync amount control and an output level. So those are really, really nice. I mean, it's funny because I have an Oakley Slim VCO that takes just one U and then I expand this to three and I love it as well. Next over is the .com Q171 quantizer bank. Essential, essential unit to have. I also got the quantizer aid next to it, the Q172. I've yet to tap into the potential of this unit. I've only used it a couple times, but this I use pretty much all the time. Next over is a four channel mixer. And now that I have an eight channel mixer up top, I seldom ever use this at all. Before I had that other mixer, this was an absolutely necessary unit to have. And I even did a, a video demo of that. Great mixer, love it. Next over is a dot-com envelope generator. This one has been uh, modulated some, so you can change the sensitivity of these controls. Also has a gate with the switch. I can't remember what the switch does, to be honest. I only use this usual gate one, so I'm sure someone will tell me. <laughs> and finally, the last unit over here. I kind of combined two VCAs myself with this kit to build the Q108-2 dual VCA. And they, so there were two dot-com VCAs. They're put into one unit to save space. So all the inputs and CVs are down here. I have this one, this green cable is coming out. This one goes directly to my Boss RE20 Space Echo unit. So that way, that's already ready to patch at all times. Just to make this video complete, these aren't part of really a modular system, but since I'm kind of doing a studio tour, I might as well just finish up with these last few units here. I have the Analog Solutions Leipzig S Mono Synth. Oh, oh man, <laughs> this thing is just wow. I basically like having a classic Moog. It has an amazing sound, love it. And then speaking of Moog, then we do have a Moog here. It's the Slim Fatty, another great Mono Synth. That actually does have CV control, and I have that routed to my patch bay that I showed you earlier, so I do incorporate that into my modular. And in this rack, I have basically kind of like the guts of the system. Starting off with just an effects processor, an Alesis. It's very basic. I don't really, to be honest, I don't even like it that much. But I do have it routed to this Tascam mixer as the effects return. The Tascam LM8ST. It's eight channels, it's compact. Not extremely versatile because it's compact, but nevertheless, it's a very sturdy, heavyweight mixer. Then next down, I have another mixer, but this is with a USB interface with the computer if I want to record tracks into Reason or whatever. It's also my final output mix. And then that all goes through the Solisa's compressor. Conservative settings, just to, to be safe, as I do my recordings, and my recordings from my modular all go live and they go directly into this Sony mini disc recorder. Yup, that's right, mini disc recorder. <laughs> I love it. I still use mini discs for everything. So I love having a digital recording done, hit record and you know, just go. And then from there, I can input that into the computer and do any final touch-ups that, that need to be done. And at the bottom of this rack, I have the Korg MS2000, the rack edition, a go-to synth. It by itself can do a lot of things, can do some kind of sequencing with sounds. It's an analog modeling synthesizer, it's digital, has a lot of controls, a lot of cool things you can do. Even has a built-in vocoder. That's why I left the, took this panel out, because I can switch out different inputs to it. And it's controlled by my keyboard controller. As for keys and clocking, I have this main keyboard controller, the Akai MPK61. Love the feel of these keys, really, really nice. I use this also for Reason and the computer, but mostly now with triggering my Moog and Korg, 
if I want to do some sequences, I can lay them out. I can actually record them with this, the Akai MPC 500. While this is a drum machine, I never use it as a drum machine. I use this mainly as my clock source. This is basically what feeds everything. So the tempo I, I select here is now gonna dictate the tempo of my dope for Mac, which will then go to the, my modular, that, that goes to the drum machine, and so on and so on. This is really the brains of my entire setup, this small little secondhand purchased <laughs> little box I got, it's kind of ironic. Um, I can also use it to record some simple sequences that I think about uh, doing live with keys. It has the ability to do that, and I do that sometimes. And then finally, my only analog synthesizer with keys, and that is the Arturia Mini Brute. It's such a versatile machine. Love the synthesizer, beautiful sound, very affordable, amazing. This is Alternating Bits. Thanks for watching.